So today I want to talk about a book that I read a couple weeks ago, Four Hour Work Week. Um, I first heard, learned about this book, this is like years ago, a few years after it was published. One of my cousins was all excited about it. She told me, she was like, oh, I'm reading this book, The Four Hour Work Week. It's great, blah, blah, blah. And then I forgot about it. And then, um, you know, a few weeks ago, I was reading a bunch of stuff related to, you know, this topic. And I was like, well, let me check this book out. Check it out from the library. Start reading it. It's probably one of my most hated books um, of all time. I think it was just absolutely awful, the message that, uh, Tim Ferriss, the author, um, had. And ordinarily, I wouldn't bother doing a video about something that I just think is absolutely terrible. But I think it's instructive, or I think it would be instructive for me to talk about why I think his message is so bad. And keep in mind, I mean, this book is a New York Times bestseller. I just checked Amazon. It had like 25,000 reviews. So hugely, hugely popular. A lot of people love it. Um, and I think it's absolutely, positively, 100% inconsistent with this concept of discovering your passion, defining your calling, um, understanding um, what I call like your authentic self, getting in, connecting with your authentic self, learning how to express your authentic self um, through, you know, something that is uh, truly fulfilling for you and, and um, is something that is meaningful um, and truly beneficial to society at large. Uh, whether that's, you know, your own local society, you know, the people in your life who you can positively affect or, you know, society on a larger scale. Um, but what he has to say is, is so terrible with respect to that and just demonstrates that he has, from my uh, uh, impression, has never fallen in love with anything that he could possibly do, like as a career, you know, as a fulfilling pursuit to provide meaningful benefit to society. Um, it's absolutely awful. You know, um, I check the, the, these books out from the library, and I have these amazing tabs, which are wonderful. I'll, I'll provide a link in the description. Um, just of the tabs that I use, it's great, because I get these books from the library, I'll read them, and if I think they're terrible, then I just like return them. It's no big deal. And, but what I do is when I read, I put all these tabs, um, and they're like sticky tabs on the paragraphs that I think you know, are really good and I want to refer to later. And then if it's a book that I want to buy, I'll generally buy it used off Amazon, and then I'll just transfer the tabs. So you know, it's like I never write in the books. It's just these tabs. So this is a book that I bought used on Amazon. And it was like the worst $6.31 I've ever spent. But I wanted to buy the book because I wanted to do a video and then later a Substack letter um, on why I think it's so absolutely terrible. Um, it's like burning a hole you know, on my bookshelf, but I have to keep it there because I think in talking about how awful it is, I can actually provide some value to you. So I wrote a list of, like, of some of the pages that like, some of the awful stuff he says. Let me just, I'll just start. All right, so one book, he says, this book is not about finding your, quote, dream job. I will take that as a, I will take it as a given that for most people, somewhere between six and seven billion of them, um, the perfect job is the one that takes the least time. Um, the perfect job is the one that takes the least time. So clearly this guy has like never fallen in love with his work. Because like when you just, when you're, when you, discover your passion or, you know, as Jeff Bezos says, you know, when your passion just, you know, finds you, um, it's not something that you want to do the least amount of time per week, like four hours per week. It's like, it's something that you want to do just with as much time as you can possibly apply to it because it's so fulfilling. It's so re personally rewarding and you believe that it's absolutely useful, relevant, important, needed, meaningful, to society, to other people. You can you know, improve other people's lives by pursuing this thing that you find so meaningful. Um, so when he says the dream job, well, you know, is the one that takes the least time. I do, I, I will acknowledge that for a lot of people who, you know, who have not found their passion, yes, the dream job is the one that takes the least amount of time. But you know, the, the, the solution 
okay, is not to try to find the dream job that takes the least amount of time that you can do four hours of work and live this amazing lifestyle. I mean, everybody would like that, but like, you know, it really doesn't happen for all, but a, a very small sliver of the population. The solution is like to try to do everything you can to discover your passion so that you want to do it 60, 80, 100 hours a week. I mean, that's not practical for a lot of people, but you want to do it all the time because it's so fulfilling. You know, it's so motivating, invigorating, and, you know, it's geared towards something that you think will benefit a lot of other people, not a book on how to, like, try to live a, a fabulous lifestyle by doing the least amount of work you possibly can. I think that's awful. Um, you know, the, the solution, again, is not find something that you can do that you can, like, scam your bosses, you know, and, like, do the least amount of work possible, like trying to work from home and do as little as possible and still get by. It's like, no, that's wrong. That's wrong. It's like, you know, like try to discover this thing that's so fulfilling. All right. Page 51. Oh my God. All right. Excitement is the more practical synonym for happiness. Excitement. Okay. And it is precisely what you should strive to chase. This is Tim Ferriss telling you it. Excitement is precisely the thing that you should strive to chase. It is the cure-all. Thanks, Tim. It's the cure-all. Wonderful. When people suggest you follow your, quote, passion or your, quote, bliss, I propose that they are, in fact, referring to the same singular concept, excitement. Okay. I got to tell you, Tim, like, you have never discovered your passion. Because if you did, you would recognize it is not the least bit about excitement. Like, there's not a day go that goes by that I feel like, you know, excitement in the sense of the word like if you were to be riding a fun roller coaster or something like that it's like there's not ex it's like deeply meaningful incredibly motivating um it's like this it, it, it's a fire inside that just burns hotter and hotter and hotter and it just it impels me forward to follow this pursuit because it's meaningful and because I think it would be very beneficial, you know, for other people. My pursuit is trying to help other people discover their passion and their calling. Um, but excitement has nothing to do with it. Like, it's rare that I feel excited. I mean, I work like 60, 70 hours a week, you know, reading, thinking, and writing. With it, and it's rare that I'm like, oh man, this is so exciting. It's more like, you know, th this is, is, is like this sacred calling that is pushing me forward. Um, not to say that it's not meaningful, not incredibly, you know, it is, and it's incredibly fulfilling, but like excitement really is the wrong word. But again, this is a guy who, you know, as far as I can tell, has never, has never felt anything like um, what one feels when one discovers one's passion, like not even close. But anyway, I'll go on. Page 87. Okay, here we go. Okay. <laughs> Lifestyle design is based on massive action. Output. Increased output necessitates decreased input. Most information is time-consuming, negative, irrelevant to your goals, and outside of your influence. I challenge you, Tim Ferriss challenges us, to look at whatever you read or watch today and tell me that it wasn't at least two of the four, meaning time-consuming, negative, irrelevant, and outside your influence. Well, okay, Tim, if you're reading stuff that is time consuming, negative, irrelevant, and outside of your influence, maybe you're just reading the wrong stuff, right? You know, he, he thinks like, oh, the, the solution, if you're like reading bad stuff, is to just decrease the amount that you're reading. It's like, I mean, okay, my experience is, um, Maybe it's unique, I don't know, because it's not like I've surveyed a thousand people who have discovered their passions. But, I mean, I didn't discover my passion until two years after I started reading like 20, 30, 40, 50 hours a week. I mean, I read a lot of amazing things. And I'll, I'll get into this in, in other, in future um, videos. But the, just without me organizing my, my thoughts for this video, it's like, the power 
that comes from reading. And, and when I say reading, I don't mean anything. I, I have an acronym, uh, or I have an expression, reading avidly, widely, and thoughtfully. Okay, avidly, widely, and thoughtfully. The power of reading avidly, widely, what it does to your mind and your perspective. It's like, if you want to change as a person, in my experience, you have to expand your perspective. You have to change the way you think. Like, if you think the same way over and over and over again, you're probably going to do the same things. Oh, and unless you win the lottery, okay, you're probably not going to have, like, greatly different um, results if you think the same and then act the same based on your thoughts. And I don't know of any more powerful, more effective, quicker, cheaper, and less prone to, like, making horrible mistakes that are going to ruin your life than reading avidly, widely, and thoughtfully. So, you know, dear Tim, um, the solution, okay, is not to decrease your input, okay? The solution is to find the better inputs that will expand your perspective, grow your knowledge, help you become um, a wiser person. And by that, I mean uh, expanding your perspective on the world and your place in it and learning how to understand yourself better. And maybe, at, like, what, what happened for me is in the process of reading avidly, widely, and thoughtfully, you might stumble upon something that triggers this. I don't know if I, I talked about this. I talked about this in a Substack article, link below, um, but triggers the natural frequency inside of you. It's like this thing that um, resonates with your authentic self, thing that, something that resonates with like who you truly are, what's truly meaningful to you. So, I mean, to say that, well, most of your inputs are probably garbage, so you should decrease your inputs. Well, okay, yeah. I mean, if you eat junk food all day, I also recommend eating less junk food. But like maybe take a look at your diet and say, how about I start consuming better food, right? You know, if, if you're reading the wrong stuff, read better stuff. That's, that's yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's absurd. But anyway, I will go on. Um, oh, God, okay. This, this, it goes from bad to worse. He's talking about um, how he can leverage other people um, so that he doesn't have to do as much like um, learning, reading, um, and it, it, like changing his own mind, right? So he talks about um, how on earth, I'm gonna read, how on earth do I act responsibly? Let, let me give an example of how I and other NR, I think NR is like the new rich or some stupid acronym, um, both consider and obtain information. I voted in the last presidential election, okay, despite having been in Berlin, because he's like traveling the world in this amazing lifestyle, working four hours a week, right? Okay. Um, I made friends in the U.S. who share my values and asked them who they were voting for and why. Second, I judge people based on actions and not words. Okay, well, Tim, I'm judging you and your words because your words are ridiculous and I think you're an idiot. But anyway, thus, I asked friends in Berlin who had more perspective outside of U.S. media propaganda how they judged the candidates based on their historical behavior. Last, I watched the presidential debates. That was it. I let other dependable people synthesize hundreds of hours and thousands of pages of media for me it was like having dozens of personal information assistants, and I didn't have to pay them a single cent. All right, like, I need to keep this clean, otherwise I could call Tim some very choice words. But th what, the, what he's suggesting is that it's better to use your friends, all right, to leverage their opinions so that you don't have to, like, develop your own opinion. I mean, th this is absurd. It's like... Okay, if your goal is to like skate through life, right, doing as little as possible and trying to make as much money as you can by doing as little as possible. And I recognize there are a lot of people that's their goal and it's not bad it's because they probably never heard of this concept of discovering your passion and like feeling this fire inside. Like, you know, because if you don't know that this thing is possible, then maybe that is your goal, just to skate through life, do as little as possible. Use your friends, like, you know, like he says, personal information assistance. It's like, how disrespectful is it to think of other people as your personal assistants by leveraging, you know, their knowledge so you don't have to think for yourself? It's like, 
my God, and this book is, is a national bestseller. I mean, I'm not complaining. I, I recognize like, the motivation for having this perspective. And I think it comes from not knowing that there is this amazing, amazing alternative to wanting to do as little as possible in your work. Now, again, I never, I didn't experience this until last August, you know, and I'm 47, so I was 47 at the time, just turned 47. So for my first 47 years, I didn't know that there was this thing that was possible. And so maybe this book would have appealed to me as little as like a couple of years ago. Um, but now that I've, I've experienced this, like, that's why I'm doing these videos. That's why I'm doing the Substack articles. Like, hopefully sometime in the next like, six to 12 months, more than like one or two people are actually going to watch these things and, and read my stuff. Because I want to do this to help other people recognize, look, there's this amazing thing. And, the, and I'm trying to come up with ways to help people discover it for themselves. Because I think their lives could be more meaningful. They could, do, they could be far more productive in terms of doing beneficial, meaning thing, meaningful things for society. I mean, it would be wonderful if more and more people discovered their passions and then focused their efforts you know, to be really, really efficient and hardworking and dedicating a lot of time to doing things for the betterment of everybody. I mean, what an amazing you know, situation that would be for society as well as for them individually leading fulfilling lives. Anyway, I just think it's awful that he's like, oh yeah, hey, I just use my friends you know, as my own personal assistants. It's like, what a jerk. I mean, you know, it, it, it's like, I'm surprised the dude has any friends if that's the way he treats them, or at least if that's the way he thinks of them. But anyway, let me go on, page 89. Okay, how to read 200% faster in 10 minutes. Okay, Tim, he, he's trying to su suggest that it, within 10 minutes, you could read 200% faster. Let me tell you, um, I have been reading, I've, in the last three years, since April of 2020, just after COVID hit the US, I've probably spent about 5,000 hours reading, 5,000 hours. And I read a little bit faster than I did. Now, I started off reading relatively, I'd say relatively slowly, but probably just about average, like, you know, just a nor however a normal person reads that. And I read a little bit quicker, a little bit quicker. I don't read 200% quicker. And I sure as hell <laughs> would never be able to do a 200% increase in 10 minutes and actually comprehend it, anything. I mean, this is absurd. I'll, I'll do another video in the future in terms of like, you know, how I how I've increased the amount that I can learn and retain from what I read. And it's not 300%. I mean, it, it's, it's not some absurd figure where, you know, you can watch a YouTube video, how, how to remember everything you ever read. It's like, come on guys. But anyway, he's like, use a finger and blow, blow through it as quickly as you can and try to read, try to only focus on like a third of each line. It's like, again, this is coming from a guy who's suggesting that you try to do as little work as possible to get by and have as good a lifestyle as you can possibly have. And I recognize, again, that sales pitch is probably very enticing for a lot of people, except those of us who have discovered our, our passions and defined our callings, and we know that there's this amazing other path, okay? So, no, I'm not even going to read this for you, but it's just like, dude, I, if you think you can improve a skill 200% in 10 minutes, it's like, you're a sucker. I mean, I, I get it. You know, you think, oh, the brain is so powerful. All we have to do, like, if I could just, you know, unlock the little secret, right? Do this one weird trick like you see on the internet. Oh, if there's this one little secret that could unlock the power of my brain, because like the human mind is like the most complex thing in the universe, as far as we know. So I understand this. You, know, you can conceptually imagine, oh, if there's this one little switch, I could be the next Beethoven or Einstein. It's like, guys, you know, if it hasn't happened yet, it's probably not going to happen. And it's like, you know, you would read about it, right? I mean, like, that kind of thing. It's like, good luck. I hope you, I hope you can make 200% improvements in, in 10 minutes on a lot of what you do in life. That would be wonderful. I wish you luck with that. I, I would recommend, you know, don't like bet any money on it, and maybe don't be too hard on yourself if you don't improve 200% in 10 minutes. I mean, it's just... Anyway, let's, let's move on. 
Page 91, I marked this. Oh, he, he recommends going on this, on this whole thing of like um, reducing your input because it's all garbage anyway, right? According to Tim Ferriss. Um, he recommends no newspapers no, for one week, a media diet. No newspapers, no websites, no tele television, no reading books, except for this book. Except for the, and one, one hour of fiction pleasure reading prior to bed. Well, okay, they're wonderful. I mean, at least he's recommending, you know, you do read something other than this amazing book full of this just mind-blowing wisdom. Um, it, it's absurd. It's absurd. Again, like, I, I, over the last three years, like I said, I read 5,000 hours. A lot of the books didn't resonate with me, but like, a lot of them did. And every single book that I read in some way helped to expand my perspective, helped to help me understand myself a little bit better, understand other people a little bit better, understand the world a little bit, little bit better. And most of it was fiction. It's not like I read a book titled How to Understand Yourself Better. No, it, it was just the process of reading so much. And I mean, it wasn't like I read 5,000 hours worth of like romance novels and whatever, science fiction. I mean, I've read like good, I mean, what I consider good stuff, newspaper, like respected newspapers. I read great literature, things that like were like written well by great authors because they had these important themes about the human condition, all these other things. Like, so I would never recommend anybody go on a reading diet. I just recommend you read the right stuff. I mean, it, it's, like, it, it's like saying, oh, you've been eating junk food for the last year. Well, here's what I recommend. Don't eat any food for a week. Because, like, yeah, you could say, well, you want to reduce the consumption of junk food. So, you know, maybe just don't eat for a week. Because if all you eat is junk food, it's better just not to have the junk food. But that's not the solution, Tim. The solution is to increase, is to eat better quality food. <laughs> but again, he couldn't say that in a book where he's trying to convince you to work four hours a week, right? Because like, I mean, my God, I read like 40 hours a week and that's just reading. Okay, maybe these days like 30 hours a week because I do, I do these videos and I write the articles and, and then, but it's just like 30 hours a week and it's still not enough. I wish I didn't have to sleep. Because there's so much that I don't know, and it's like my, my perspective expands with every single thing that I read. Um, but it's still not enough because, you know, I only started at 44. I, I, I hope that what I'm saying resonates with some of you who are like 14, not 44. Because like, it would be wonderful to get people to understand, you know, not only like, you know, just the power of reading, but then there's this amazing way, this, this amazing thing that you could discover, your passion, this thing that resonates with your authentic self. Um, I mean, it's, it's amazing and it's, it's awful. It's awful when, when, you know, to read this stuff and it, it's even worse that it was so popular, but I get it. I get it. Everybody wants the pill because they don't know that there's this amazing thing, right? I mean, if you never knew that there was this thing of like falling in love with somebody, then maybe you would just like to have you know, just non-committal, you know, sort of keep it light type of relationships or whatever. And that would make kind of make sense. Unless you knew that there was this thing that was possible. And then, you know, maybe one day you, you hope to at least, you know, understand what it feels like. Anyway, I will move on. Page 92. Okay. I, I, it's just more of the same. I got to skip that. It's just at some point... I could beat this dead horse. Okay. Oh, my God. All right. This is... Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this. Only be, it's not really related to, like, anything other than what kind of person this guy is. I mean, okay, so for all four years of school, I guess this was college, I had a policy. If I received... I'm reading... This is Tim Ferriss. If I, if I received anything less than an A on the first paper or non-multiple choice test in a given class... I would bring two to three hours of questions to the grader's office hours and not leave until the other, the other, had answered them all or stopped out of exhaustion. This served two important purposes. One, I learned exactly how, to, how the grader evaluated work, including his or her prejudices and pet peeves. 
Okay. Two, the grader would think long and hard about ever giving me less than an A. I mean, this is like how to turn yourself into a total jerk. And I wouldn't, I would use a different word if like this weren't for, you know, on YouTube. It's like how to make yourself such a jerk to everybody that they just, they just want to give you an A so you'll just go away. It's like, really? Really? This is, I, I, it's like amazing he even put this in, in, on paper. But this is the same guy who like uses his friends as his personal assistants, right? So like, you know, why would it be any different? Anyway, it's just like when, when, when you have a different perspective on some of this stuff, you see it and it's like, oh my God, I can't even believe people would try to pretend as though this is like a good thing to do. But anyway, page 291, okay? I've spent more than a decade investigating the mind and concept of meaning. A quest that has taken me from the neuroscience laboratories of top universities to the halls of religious institutions worldwide. Okay, this is coming from a guy who wants to think as little as possible, who wants to, I hate this word, consume information, but who wants to read as little as possible in order to get by and, and leverage other people's efforts in order to have this like amazing lifestyle. And he wants us to believe that he has spent more than a decade investigating the mind, you know, in, at top universities, in the halls of religion. It's like, this dude wants to work four hours a week, man. I mean, it's like, he didn't investigate anything. It's like, whatever investigation you might have done was probably so incredibly superficial that you didn't learn anything anyway. I mean, it's absurd. But, I mean, and then he goes on. He quotes... He quotes philosophers, and I'll get to it in a minute. And I'm like, right, I'll get to that in a minute. 294. Okay, oh, here we go. Language learning deserves special mention. He talks about learning different foreign languages, which is great. It exercises the left, the right half of your brain. Or maybe the left, um, anyway, I don't want to. It exercises your brain. It, it's good, right? It's good. It is, bar none, bar none, thanks to Tim Ferriss. He's an authority on you know, bar not the best thing you can do to hone clear thinking. Now I'm like mic'd up, so I don't want to go over to my bookshelf, but I just read a book. It was called The Power of Writing It Down by, I think her name is Alison Fallon. The Power of Writing It Down. It was a really good book. It's non-technical, um, which is good. It's kind of a light read. Um, because like, for instance, I, I read Daniel Kahneman's Thinking Fast and Slow, very technical university professor. Actually, he's a, he's a Nobel Prize winner. But The Power of Writing It Down, a very light book. I recommend you read it. One of these, like, it's like 225 pages, which is like right around the, the minimum length a book ought to be in order to be able to sell it as a book. Um, but it's good because you get through it quickly. And it's like, it talks about the power of writing your thoughts down and how it helps you clarify your thinking and bring into your consciousness things that you're trying to figure out. And also, it helps to alert your subconscious to things that it should work on in the background, like thing, things that you're trying to figure out, things you don't understand. It, I have found that writing is an incredibly, incredibly powerful tool to hone your thinking. Um, I mean, it, I, I might have mentioned this before, you know, in the, the last six months, you know, I, I, I've been writing, I, I get up, I set my alarm for four o'clock in the morning, I get up, I write for two hours. My phone's in airplane mode, undisturbed, it's timed, and it's, it's the best, most productive use of those two hours I could possibly have. It's amazing. I just, I write, you know, my reflections on things that I've read and things that I'm thinking about regarding things that I've read. Um, anyway, I, this will be the subject of another video, but I highly recommend you check out the book. Don't, you don't need to buy it used. I mean, you don't need to buy it on Amazon because like these books are expensive, man. Um, go to your library. You know, maybe if you spend a lot of time on YouTube, you probably haven't been to your library recently. I recommend um, check it out from the library. Um, worst case, buy it used on Amazon. I don't see any point in buying new books. I mean, you know, most of you are probably not super wealthy so it's like why do you need to be spending your money on something that's totally pristine when you can get like a very good copy on used on amazon that doesn't have scribbles and stuff but anyway 
I'm, I'm digressing here. Um, but, all right, so he says, bar none, thanks, Tim, the authority on everything, language learning. I re highly, highly recommend writing and reading that book. I'm not saying bar none, it's the best, but I'm saying it, in my experience where I do this two hours a day, outside of like the time I spend writing my Substack articles, um, it's just so incredibly powerful. I highly recommend, you know, read the book. And then, um, like I recommend for reading, you know, if you don't read every day and you're not an avid reader, do five minutes. Set, set a timer on your phone for five minutes and do that every day for a month just to build the habit. Because there's another book, I think it was called How We Learn. Oh, no, no. And then there was another book. I read so much, it's nuts. I, then there was another book, oh, Atomic Habits. This one is right here, which um, it's okay, it's not great. Um, but some of the things he, he talks about you know, are, are useful, and I'll be doing a future video on this. But one thing you know, he, he talks about is like, you know, start small with you know, easy habits, and then you, know, you can build over time. Anyway, that's what I did with writing and with reading, and it was in incredibly powerful, and it, it builds your stamina as you're also building, your, um, you know, building the habit. So start easy. Write, I recommend read for five minutes a day, write for five minutes a day. Do that for a month, every day for a month, and then go up like to 10 minutes or whatever. You, you can figure that out for yourself, but like, I recommend start super easy. There are fewer things, I, I think, more powerful for the human mind in, in terms of expanding your mind than reading and writing. And of course, going along with that is like deliberate, thoughtful reflection, thinking. Um, but anyway, uh, I, I realize I'm digressing. On page all right, 305, he quotes Seneca. Seneca, I had to look this guy up. Ancient Roman, I would have guessed Greek, but he's ancient Roman philosopher. Okay, um, he quotes Seneca, an ancient Roman philosopher. Okay, I bet Seneca didn't work four hours a week. I, I bet he spent a lot of time, you know, really thinking deeply about the things that he wrote about. And yet Tim Ferriss in his four hour work week book quotes Seneca. And then right below quoting Seneca, he quotes Steve Jobs. Okay, I'll, I'll post a, a link in the description where Steve Jobs, I think it was like a Harvard graduation thing where Steve Jobs is like, if you haven't found your pet passion, keep trying, it's totally worth it. It wasn't like the world's most inspiring speech, but like this is Steve Jobs who was responsible for helping make Apple what it is today, right? One of the greatest, you know, entrepreneurs of our generation or whatever of recent, you know, decades, um, who probably spent, he, he, he found this thing that he loved, he probably spent 90 hours a week working, I, maybe more than that, you know, but whatever, like a huge amount of time, not four. I mean, if you think Steve Jobs could have built Apple working four hours a week, you're a fool. Or, or maybe you're just, I don't, want to, I don't want to be disparaging, but like, he, he didn't do it on four hours a week, right? And part of it was because he loved it. He wanted to do it like probably 400 hours a week, you know, if he could, or you can't, but like, that's the point. That's the point of all this. And so in this book on, you know, how to work four hours a week, Tim Ferriss is quoting Seneca, a philosopher, and Steve Jobs, who probably loved his work so much, he thought about it every waking minute, right? I mean, it, the absurdity, you know, at least is not lost on me. Um, but I have this, I, I have the perspective of someone who has discovered his passion, who knows what this feels like. And so I see things in a different way. You know, again, I don't disparage people who like think, oh, wow, that would be wonderful if I could just work four hours a week and have this amazing lifestyle. You know, most of the world's population thinks that way, but most of the world's population has never discovered their passion. So they don't know what they're missing. And that's, why, again, why I do these videos. Um, okay, I mean, he, he recommends you read Seneca and another philosopher. Um, and I'm like, okay, thanks, Tim, but like these guys worked a lot more than four hours a week, you know, to, to be able to produce these, you know, important and meaningful thoughts, which all of which have seemed to escape you and your book. 371. Oh, okay, this is funny. <laughs> okay, all right, he goes, I know, I know. I said not to read too much. Hence, the recommendations here, and these are like uh, recommended reading. The recommendations here are restricted to the best of the best. Um, this book's interviewees and I have used and named when asked, quote, what is the one book that changed your life the most? Okay, all right, now, 
we can all, I, I would think most people can think of a, um, a book that was like, out of all the books you read, what was you know, the one that comes to mind when you think what, what changed your life the most? But looking at this from another perspective, certainly from somebody who has spent the la you know, 5,000 hours over the last three years reading, this is just reading, focused reading. The one book that, that's like asking Usain Bolt, what was the most important workout you did in the four years leading up to any of the three Olympics where he won gold medals, right? It would be like, dude, it was kind of like every workout was important, right? I mean, he could probably think of some brutal workouts, right? But it's like, no, it doesn't work that way. I, and I understand his question because, you know, you know, it's like we all have like, you know, important books. Um, but it, it's more like, no, it's kind of like all of them together. You know, there was no one book that did it. I mean, certainly for me, it was, you know, the 300 or whatever, 250 or whatever it was that I've read over the last uh, three years, they all played a part. They, all, they were all important. Even the ones that didn't resonate with me, even the ones I didn't even really enjoy, it's like, it, it, you know, it all builds. It all builds. Um, in the same way, every single workout is important over four years, you know, for somebody who's preparing to, you know, compete at the Olympic Games. Anyway, um, I have reached the end of all the hideousness I wanted to discuss. I could go on, but I don't, you know, this is a, a, already a dead horse. Um, I, I recommend you never ever read this book if you are truly interested in trying to discover your passion because everything that he says is like the antithesis of like what you would want to do if you discovered your passion. Um, I recommend you read as much as you possibly can things that expand your perspective. I recommend you read avidly, widely, and thoughtfully. Um, great literature, newspapers, like whatever. It doesn't matter, but like things that expand your perspective on yourself, on the world. Um, if you're not much of a reader, again, I recommend five minutes a day timed on your phone, set a timer, uh, five minutes reading, five minutes writing, every day for a month, 31 days, okay? Do it for 31 straight days. If you miss a day, the count starts over again. If you hit 31, or if you like round numbers, 30, then after that, maybe go up to 10 minutes. Because if you do, if you do it like five minutes a day, every day for 30 days, you're probably going to want to like do it a little bit more. But if you force yourself to be like, wow, I, I, I'd like to read for 30 minutes a day. No, it's like I'm going to set it at five minutes and I can only do five minutes because you have to build the habit and you don't want to like, you know, do too much and then you don't, you're like, well, I did 30 minutes yesterday so now I don't have to do anything for the next four days. That's not how habits are built. So anyway, I'll get into like the whole habit thing um, in another video. Uh, I just wanted to give my thoughts on this. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Um, check out the links that I provide below and if you haven't, check out the Substack articles. It, they're not great right now. I'm just starting off and I know it's like, they're more analytical than useful and you know over time they'll get better as will these videos um so anyway uh do what you want check out whatever links might interest you below and i'll see you in the next video goodbye